Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at creating dynamic shadows inside of Vegas Pro with BCC Cast Shadows, part of Continuum 2020. Okay, so here we are in Vegas Pro, and I have a clip here in my timeline. Now before we begin applying Cast Shadow, we're going to need some text. Now I could create this with regular Vegas Pro text, like you see here. I have some text, and at its most basic, I could just drag BCC Cast Shadow onto it to generate my shadows. However, as you saw in the opening, I want to create a very specific text effect. And to do that, we're going to take a quick detour into Title Studio. Now if you only have the Stylize unit and don't have access to 3D objects in Title Studio, not to worry. As I just showed you, everything we're going to do with Cast Shadow can be done with the text available to you in Vegas Pro. But since we have Continuum at our disposal, let's create something really cool. So what I've done here is duplicated my clip, and I'm going to apply Title Studio to the top layer. The reason for this is because Title Studio will convert the layer it's applied to to alpha, and we want to maintain our background image. With Title Studio applied, I'm going to launch the UI. Now we're going to keep the default extruded text, but feel free to change it to anything you like. For example, I'm going to go in and change it to Continuum. Now let's also tweak the tracking a bit and update the font to get something really nice. And you know what, let's add a bit of drop shadow to pop it off the background. Once that's done, I want to update my texture. And this is why it is so important to use extruded text objects, because they're going to allow me to change my surface texture to pull in the video layer, then create a glassy look. To do this, I need to let Title Studio know which parts of my text I'm going to be changing. Now I can do that here in the Material group. By default, this is set to 1, which means that any textures I apply will be wrapped around the whole object. Each of the four options adds a new face that can be modified. So, for example, if I select 4, I will gain options for the front, extrusion, bevel, and back materials. Now be aware that more sides we apply materials to, the more processing power is going to be required. For this effect, I'm going to select three so that I can focus on the front, extrusions, and bevel. Next, I'll open up my front material track and select the color track. This is going to bring me to the material attributes tab. Here, I'll be able to change the type from color to texture. When I do that, Title Studio is going to pull the texture from my V1 track, or the video track that I've applied Title Studio to. Once that's done, I want to move to the Texture Modifier tab and tweak the X and Y scale a bit. Maybe around 103, 105, nothing crazy. What this is going to do is slightly increase the scale of the texture within the text, giving the illusion that the text is distorting the background. Once that's done, I'll select the Extrusion and Bevel materials, and in the Material Attributes tab for each, I'm going to change the diffuse color. What I'll do is I'll use the eyedropper to sample the lighter wheat color for the bevel, and then a darker shade for the extrusion. This is going to help define the edges of our 3D text. With that done, let's enable Title Safe by selecting it from the Composite window. And what I want to do is align my text along the horizon. I can tweak its size and tracking if necessary, but what I want you to notice is that when I move the text, the texture that is mapped to it moves with it, which breaks the illusion a bit. Not to worry though, because it's an easy fix. I just have to jump back into the Texture Modifier tab and adjust the X and Y shift a bit. I can hold the Alt or Option key to fine tune those adjustments. But remember though, we don't need to match it exactly, since we've increased the scale a bit to create a distortion. But something like this is going to work nicely. Next, I'm going to select my front material track and go up to my Deformers and Shaders menu. From the Shader drop-down, I'm going to select a basic blur shader and apply this to the front material. I'll then pull back on the Master Blur a bit until I get a nice frosted glass look. The last thing I want to do is select my Scene track and go to the Lights tab. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the ambient a bit and, using the on-screen controls, move the light source around until the text is fully lit. Something like that. Now I'm going to want to use this setup again in my Reflection tutorial, so rather than needing to refer back to this tutorial every time I want to create the text, when I apply out of Title Studio, I'm going to click Save in my preset bar, and just save that off as glassy text. Now I can load this exact preset whenever I want to. And if you want to see more with this preset, head on over to my Reflection tutorial for some really cool effects. Okay, now on to the good stuff. As you can see here, when I play that back, we have this nice glassy text that sits on our background. Let's go to the Stylize unit and add BCC Cast Shadows to our text layer. 
Now this can either be the Title Studio layer that we created a moment ago, or like I said earlier, any native Vegas text. As with all Continuum effects, I am going to have access to professionally designed presets in the FX browser. I can simply select one, preview it, and apply it back to the host to begin customizing. But let's look at creating our effect from scratch. Inside of our effects group, the first thing that we see is the preview mode. This helpful option will generate a grid only, or a grid with the shadow effect, to better help visualize the position of the shadow plane. By default, the shadow plane will be aligned to our text, but this can come in very handy when manually adjusting our shadows. Now feel free to customize the color if green isn't your thing, but don't forget to turn it off when you go to render out your effect. If I want to manually control the position of the shadows, I can do so in the shadow plane group. The parameters for position and rotation are available to me if I disable auto fit shadow. But for this effect, having the shadow auto fit to our text is preferable. Now the built-in light source will be your go-to group for positioning and modifying the light source that creates the shadows. You can manually adjust its X, Y, or Z position, and doing so will instantly update the look of your shadows. Let's position the light source far enough away that the shadows that are cast extend into our foreground. In a bit we're going to look at keyframing the position of this light source, but for now let's focus on setting up our shadows. Firstly, let's soften these shadows a bit. By increasing the softness parameter, this is going to blur out the existing shadows, giving them a more diffuse look. If I tweak the softness Y ratio, I can stretch that blur along the Y axis a bit more. I can also adjust the fade gradient here by adjusting the fade start and the fade length. If I want a shorter shadow length, I can reduce the length here, but make sure you also tweak the fade start since this controls where the gradient begins. If my gradient begins further than the length of the actual shadow, we're going to get a clipped edge. So I'll want to finesse both values so I get the right look to my length and my gradient. I can also adjust the color of the shadow if I want, though for this project that's not necessary. What I want to do is bring down the opacity a bit just to blend the shadows into the grass. Now the last thing that I want to do here is go to the first frame and set a keyframe. Let's move the light source over here so that our shadows appear at an angle. Then I'll go to the last frame and move it over here so that they switch position. This will animate the shadows from left to right. Now remember, when animating the shadows themselves, we're adjusting the light source, not the shadow position. Adjusting the position of the shadow plane would typically be used to position the shadow's location, either attached to the text as we see here, or elsewhere in the scene, for example, on the side of a building. Okay, and the last thing that I want to do is add a bit of texture to the shadows. The clip moves across the field here, so let's add a bit of movement to our shadows. I'm going to open up the Ripple on Floor subgroup and increase my ripple amount. This is going to create a noise effect to move throughout the shadow. The higher the value, the more intense the noise. I'm going to tweak the speed a bit since we don't want it to go too fast, and then play around with the X and Y scale of the ripple noise feel free to experiment until you have something that looks a bit like this. Now since we animated the shadows, we can finish this whole effect off by adding Lens Flare 3D to the track. Feel free to experiment with the overall look, but I went for something simple. If I open up the Light Source group, I'll set a keyframe for the built-in light position, and I can position it to animate with the shadows. Once I have something that works really well for me, I'll play it back, and there you go. As always, feel free to experiment with the look of your shadows by playing with the light position and ripple parameters. You can even use the built-in camera to animate your text in 3D space. But as far as using Cast Shadow to create this effect, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morelli with Boris FX, and for more great tutorials, including a look at BCC Reflection in Vegas, don't forget to check out the Boris FX website. Take care.